He is a rodent, for like, sure. Like the, is it frog or rodent thing? It, or frog or rat? Frog or, he is definitely he a rat. He is definitely a rat. What's Daisy Edgar Jones? A frog or a rat? I think she's also a rat. I think it's rat, rat and rat, right? Oh, yeah, big time rat. She's a rat. Are we both frogs? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Ride Home Podcast. My name is Abby. Hey, guys, it's Caitlin. Sorry, I'm really distracted. There's an Ella ha- hanging off of your mic right now. <laughs> and the OCD in me. She's with us always. She's always with us wherever we go. Wherever we go, Ella is with us in the form of her hair. <laughs> everywhere. It's everywhere. Just think of all the places Ella has gone. <laughs> yeah. She's like flat Stanley. Yeah. Anyways, we are back this week with a disaster movie that we actually weren't planning on really even like reviewing. We would probably see it eventually, but I don't know if we were like clamoring to go see it in theaters. No. I think our expectations were that it was not going to be good. Mm -hmm. And so we just assumed that we were not going to see it, which is the sequel to Twister, which what year did Twister come out? 96? 96. 96. Mm -hmm. So the sequel to Twister, which was Twisters, Mm -hmm. that was getting some pretty positive reviews online. And so we decided to just kind of like impulse buy into the hype and go see this movie on a Saturday afternoon. So this movie is a sequel to Twister, but it is not a direct sequel in that it does not run from one movie into the other. It's basically just like Twister is a tornado movie and Twisters is also a tornado movie. So I was actually wondering about that, if they're actually considering this a sequel or not, because... None of the characters, like you said, carried, carried over, over from the mm-hmm. first one. But it's like I guess the it maybe same wouldn't... exact name, just with an S at the end. Right. <laughs> I feel like maybe it's not a sequel. It's more of just like an installment of a franchise. Does okay. that make sense? Okay. Yeah. We both obviously grew up in the 90s. So mm-hmm. Twister was something that I think everybody saw back then. Uh-huh. But I think I only saw it like once, maybe growing up which, which is, is so yeah. crazy to yeah. me because you love disaster movies I do twister is still sitting at like a 68 on Rotten mm-hmm. tomato so it's it's held up and i feel like it's sort of like for me like a nostalgia kind mm-hmm. of movie and i don't know i was sort of excited that like twisters was a thing but also sort of just kind of curious of like what they were going to do with it because it was like not really outright calling itself a sequel which it really wasn't it isn't yeah especially because we watched twister Mm -hmm. in the morning before we went to go see twisters Mm -hmm. and i think like the main things that i carried away from watching twister as an adult is a i said it to you while we were watching it like they do not make music like that for movies no anymore it's so adventurous and boisterous and like just every scene kind of like bounced from one scene Mm -hmm. to the other and it was really fun and genuinely like Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt were so great so in good. it. Um, the effects for the time period that it was. The only <laughs> the only shot that's horrible was the the weather satellite floating above the earth. Oh, right at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I was like, maybe they spent all their money on the tornadoes, which like, I'm glad they did. Yeah. Maybe you didn't need to put the saddle. But you also <laughs> have to think about like, so that's so funny because it was really bad. But also it was 1996. And I mean, think about what computers look yeah. like at the time. So yeah. Th- I mean, to people, viewers at that time probably were like, wow, like oh my that's God. a satellite on the earth. Uh-huh. But like to us, it was like... Yikes. Yikes. It's like two dimensional. Yeah. Like it was, whew, it was bad. I don't know. I, I just, I really enjoyed Twister. I thought the cast of like wacky scientists oh were, it was kind of like a who's who of like character actors mm-hmm. watching that back. And like, I didn't realize like who was in it. And so I really enjoyed Twister. I mm-hmm. thought it was just a really fun movie. And for the time that it was made, also a very impressive movie. Really? There's well. certainly some like dated aspects of it. Sure. For sure. But um, going into Twister's, I didn't know really much about like whether or not, like you said, they were going to continue the story, if they were Mm. going to like call back to these characters Mm -hmm. or, you know, obviously Bill Paxton has passed away, so he wouldn't like reprise his role or anything like that. But I didn't know if it was going to be like connected. Um, Mm -hmm. 
So I will say right off the rip that if you have not seen Twister, you can see Twisters. There is no like, oh, do I need to see the original first? No, you Mm -hmm. do not. I also don't believe that Twisters was made by the same people either. Like Mm, the, I don't don't think the writers or Mm -hmm. directors or anything like that are the same Mm -hmm. that carried over. I think I did see something that like Steven Spielberg was involved in both. Mm -hmm. Like he produced produced in some way Mm -hmm. um but i think that's the only like big name that i have on the record to Mm -hmm. say that was involved in both of them um so could you give us a quick synopsis and cast list of twisters this is quite the lengthy synopsis haunted by a devastating encounter with a tornado kate cooper gets lured back to the open plains by her friend javi to test a groundbreaking new tracking system she soon crosses paths with tyler owens a charming but reckless social media superstar who thrives on posting his storm chasing adventures as storm season intensifies kate tyler and their competing teams find themselves in a fight for their lives as multiple systems converge over central oklahoma Oh my god. A novel. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell? Why did we need that much information about the movie Twisters? Yeah, that was a lot. All right. So that being said, <laughs> the movie the, the movie stars Glenn Powell, Daisy Edgar Jones, Anthony Ramos, Kiernan Shipka, once again, mm-hmm. back to back. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, and this cast. movie is directed by Lee Isaac Chung who also directed Minari. What a wild IMDb discovery. Discovery. Minari <laughs> and Twister. Twisters. Twisters. <laughs> I'm going to have to like force myself to say it. I feel like there couldn't be two more opposite movies. Actually, no. Ever. No. The only thing that I can think of is like, they're both set in like the plains. Like, is not Minari, Arkansas? Yes, which but like, is a little, I looked it up. So Lee Isaac Chung, actually, he's his family's Korean. Yeah. But he grew up in Arkansas. I think like Minari is. Yeah. So it's like him. It's, yeah. yeah. Sort of like autobiographical. Yeah. So he has, I guess he knows Arkansas. Yeah. So that's, he sticks with what he knows. So I guess that's kind of like the only connection that I would say would make sense yeah. for him to be directing a disaster movie. Yeah. But interesting choice. Very interesting choice. I hope you had fun. Uh, it seems <laughs> like he did. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, Caitlin, did you have fun? What did you think of Twisters? Oh my God, this face. Okay. I didn't hate it. Mm-hmm. Also didn't love it. Uh-huh. Not sure if I even liked it. Um, <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm having a problem. Yeah. Having having a major problem. Okay. What's the major problem? It feels like people are running out of ideas for movies and uh. so they're just ripping old ones mm-hmm. off. Yeah. Twister was good though. Yeah. Like we didn't need Twisters. Twisters. See, I'm okay with it simply because it was a different like cast a different mm-hmm. story like it, it, i mean how many asteroid movies do we have you know like sure. we have deep impact we yeah. have armageddon like i feel like you can reuse the form of disaster over and okay. over and over again okay so i don't necessarily agree with you that it feels like a like a cop out or it feels like they didn't need to make this movie okay however i am going to say that my review for this movie is that it was a movie. Mm-hmm. That's my, <laughs> that's that's, my, see, that's like, my review. Okay, see, like, that's what I'm saying about it. And, like, this is this is one of my biggest issues with this movie. Glenn Powell. Uh, Glenn Powell. Okay. Glenn Powell. I'm going to be respectful about Glenn Powell because I'm sure he's a lovely person. Actually, I don't know that. We don't he might know. be an asshole. We don't I don't actually know. know. We don't know. Glenn Powell is is he has the bone structure for it he has the voice for it he has the uh swagger for Mm, it mm -hmm. he is a villain yeah do not force glenn powell to to fit the leading man role Mm -hmm. because it just does not work every time Mm -hmm. and i know that like in this movie which by the way we're doing spoilers because it's it's not that serious serious yeah in this movie he does play somebody that like we originally think is kind of like the villainous Mm -hmm. like you know he's a douchebag youtube star like showboaty showboaty all of that and then like you learn more about him and you know you learn he gives back he has a heart he has a heart yeah and it's just like I don't know if it's just carried 
over from the atrocity that was anyone but you mm. or what it was, but I cannot look at Glenn Powell and be like, oh my God, a handsome prince. <laughs> like he comes across as, you know, uh, like an evil, like in frozen the guy yeah what's hans? his name hans yeah like he would play hans yes. in a live action frozen yes oh my god yeah he would you know what mm -hmm. i mean like the kind of pretty on the outside nasty on the inside mm -hmm. type of person like he could have played chris evans's role in knives out yes. you know like the spoiled brat all of those things yeah he i'm not saying glenn powell should not be an actor he can right. he sure. can and absolutely can be an actor but unless he's like in a military role. Yeah, he's I feel like he needs to be typecast in that too. Right. Mm -hmm. He's just not a leading man. And I think being forced into that. It's stilting his <laughs> acting. It's stilting his acting. But also like I feel like I'm being force fed Glenn Powell. I think we all have been yeah. being forced Glenn Powell for the past. I mean, ever since anyone but you came out, oh, he's been shoved down our throats. Yeah. And to be honest, like he doesn't do anything for me, no. like at all. No. Looks or acting wise. I know it's very shallow. Sure, he's attractive. very, very attractive yeah. person, but it's just, I don't know, it's giving disingenuine. Yeah. And I feel like, honestly, I feel like he actually might be a good actor. Uh huh. But like you said, I don't think he's been given an opportunity to show what he's capable of because mm -hmm. of the roles he's cast in. I don't ever fully trust his character Correct. because he looks like such a douche that I'm like, mm, something's, something's going to go wrong. Yes. Like, yeah, like something's off with this guy. And so it's just kind of like this like army hammer creep factor that yeah. I'm just like, mm, is everything like good with him? Yeah. You know, and he also just kind of gives like straight white middle of america energy that i just don't mm. like that's not what i'm going <laughs> not for. special enough for you <laughs> <laughs> i want you to look like a twink from brooklyn like yes oh my come God. on man like i don't know I, I think my hang up with him also is a hang up i have with daisy edgar jones mm -hmm. where she kind of seems like she plays the same character every single time we yeah. see her in anything yeah it's just like a repetitive like well it's it's not even like she has a character it's just daisy mm -hmm. edgar jones yeah i think having those two be the leads and having like kind of a romantic story built around them mm -hmm. was really tough to watch yeah however i loved when the tornado blew up that factory <laughs> okay that was sick like there were some really cool shots in it sure. you know there were times that i just was able to like sit there and, and soak up like the disaster aspect mm -hmm. of it and it was enjoyable and it felt like i was in like a summer movie and uh -huh. eating my popcorn and it felt very like dumb if that makes yeah. like it like my yeah. brain went like boo mm -hmm. so just i put a little br like a little rest yeah a little respite <laughs> Like, I appreciate the fact that it gave my brain a break. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I am a little shocked at how widely well received this film has been. Me too. Because my other issue with this movie and why I'm surprised everyone loves it so much. I feel like besides the factory part. I know exactly where you're going. Yep. We could have had way better tornado CGI. What? And not. Okay. I feel like not only was the CGI nothing to write home about, I wasn't really impressed with the sound design. I thought like because we are now in 2024 and we have so much better access to sound design, like mm -hmm. Twister, it kind of the the tornadoes just kind of had this like groan, like this animal groan. Mm -hmm. And that was what was the sound of the tornado. Yeah. I feel like we could have gotten a lot cooler sound of the tornado I for this like one. I feel like everything could have been cooler <laughs> yeah. about the tornadoes. Yeah. Like, I think, honestly, that is the most disappointing part about this movie. If you were going to make a tornado movie... Yeah. ...almost 30 years after... Twister. Twister. Give us way more and way better. Yeah. It just... I don't know. It wasn't like thrilling it wasn't scary like there were parts of twister the original 
to me that were like genuinely scary and like you're like worried of what's gonna happen and like in the first two minutes of this movie four people get sucked up by a tornado yeah it was just like huh that was a very chaotic already but like you didn't even really see the tornado Mm -hmm. i don't know like to me because i like space and nature and things that naturally occur in the world i wanted to see like a big ass tornado like vantage point like i wanted like more drone takeaway footage i I don't know it felt like they kept shoving down our throats that this is like this unprecedented tornado outbreak in this Mm -hmm. area which like it's oklahoma so like there's always there's always tornadoes so if you're going to tell me that this is like some crazy outbreak a i want it to be really what you said giant Mm -hmm. tornadoes and a lot more camera work like Mm -hmm. inside the tornadoes Mm -hmm. and it just felt like we were just always focused on the people like we were trying to save money from showing the tornado yes i'm so disappointed in that because i wanted to like it like honestly i went in with a really open mind about this movie and i was excited about it i was excited because i love twister so much like that has always been one of my favorite nostalgia movies Mm -hmm. i've seen it a bunch of times and I was excited to see like a newer version of it. Yeah. To see what that was going to look like because I was so watching Twister back, like you said, I was really impressed with what they did. Yeah. Like in 1996 to make a movie like that, it's impressive. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's really impressive. And the technology has advanced so much in filmmaking in the past 30 years. And I was excited to see what they were going to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like they really wasted it on that. Like you said, they wasted it on the actors who weren't even that good. I mean, like, why were we wasting it on that? And I also feel like I was let down by the plot around the actors. Like, Mm. I felt like I was let down by the storyline of the characters because, A, it was really predictable, like, Mm -hmm. unbelievably predictable. But B, they had all of this chemistry to lead up to a really awkward scene in an airport where you're expecting a kiss Mm -hmm. and then they don't and they just kind of like walk off together they're kind of like all right let's go do some more tornado chasing in the words of love island i felt like we got like custard pied like i felt like we got completely pied pied off. off You know me. I'm not even like a crazy rom-com fan. Mm -hmm. I don't really love romance movies. Mm -hmm. But like their two characters had enough chemistry and had spent enough time together Mm -hmm. that by that point, a kiss would have made complete sense. Yes. And it felt like it was the ultimate representation of this movie of just being like a flat line. Give us nothing. Where it was like, it didn't even end on like a, a an exciting nothing. Conclusion. No, <laughs> I'm telling you, it is so weird. And just so many weird choices. Mm-hmm. Also, another thing I don't know, this is unrelated to the yeah. movie, but more about the experience. People who have to make a comment every five uh, seconds uh-huh. during a movie. <laughs> The you guy don't... the guy next to us was on fire. I wanted to lean over and just say, you know that thoughts can be silent. You wanted to gentle parent the guy. Be like, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm so hey, glad. Buddy. I'm so, so glad that you're interested in this movie and that it's happy and entertaining to you. Does it feel good on your body? Is it is this is this <laughs> something we should say out loud though? I want you to think that before you say things. Does it have to be out loud? At one point, he literally, (laughs) as the experiment paid off at the Mm -hmm. end of the movie, he just goes, it worked. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. I was like, yeah, buddy, it did. Are you happy? This was not a man with special needs. No. This was not a child. This was not. This was a full Full grown grown man. man Full grown man. With his wife. I think he loved the movie. I think he. Yeah. He really got into it. Whenever she walked out with her American flag shirt, he goes, wow, what a shirt. (laughs) Stop. It's like he's never seen an American flag before. Every time he sees one, he's excited. Um, Probably sexually. (laughs) I was going to say he gets hard, but I didn't know if that was appropriate for our podcast. It's fine. 
we put an explicit rating on our podcast, so it's all good. Oh, yeah. Um, I do need to just say one more thing about Twisters uh, that I hated, and it was the music. Yeah. So the music was like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but it was Imagine Dragons meets Jelly Roll on <laughs> crack cocaine. Like, it was like... The most white trash sounding, like slap your knees, <laughs> hard rock, divorced dad, like hasn't paid child support in a it's couple that of stomp rock. years. Stomp rock. I don't know how to explain it, but it was super literal. Very to, literal. To the scene that was happening. Yes. Like, like one song literally was like in Oklahoma. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we know they're in Oklahoma. So like if you feel it, chase it. And then the next song is like chase it. oh it was really bad it was like you know in netflix (laughs) reality shows when it Mm -hmm. like show uh, like selling sunset and stuff like that when they're like you know she's a bad bitch but she knows how to get the job done yes (laughs) it was like that pretty faces everywhere yeah. dancing in the streets like it's like okay very very like literal. i felt like at one point like daisy edgar jones was gonna like turn off a light or something and then it would just be like all her friends are dead <laughs> and she's a scientist <laughs> She likes Glenn Powell. Like, it, yeah, it was really bad. It was, it was so maybe bad. some of the worst music I've ever heard in a movie. And I'm not lying. It no. was some of the worst music I've ever heard it in a movie. Felt, yeah, it felt like a long. I it felt, felt very like where the crawdads sing adjacent. Yeah, I felt hate crimed by this movie. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pride Month is over. So I guess this is what we get. Yeah. This is what July has to offer us. Nothing but patriotism and it did it just felt it felt strange. It I don't know. For us. It wasn't for us, but you know what? I am glad that people who are enjoying it are enjoying it because there is something really exciting that I need to express, which is that the last couple of times that we have gone to the theater, mm-hmm. our theater has been packed. Our crowds have been full. Mm -hmm. And first of all, that's actually a really good sign for the economy. That's one of the like the markers of like whether Mm. or not the economy is doing well is whether or not people are going to the movies because that's seen as like surplus cash. So like if you're breaking the bank, you're not you don't have money to go to the movies. And people are in line to get popcorn. People are going to see these films. And so, and that's the thing is that like there is, which if you actually like pay attention to politics and like the, you know, stock market and all that bullshit, like we are on like a good upward trend. Okay. Even though it sometimes doesn't feel like it. Sure. Um, And so I think like for me, it's giving me like a sense of positivity about like society and like Mm. culture in general. Like I'm Mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Like maybe like people are starting to like do a little bit better Mm -hmm. and like have some extra money laying around and all that it's also just really fun to experience films again with an audience because i feel like you and i have been so religiously dedicated to using whatever money we had at the time to go to the movies Mm -hmm. and to treat ourselves to that experience that from about like 2019 to like last year Mm -hmm. you and i would be seeing every movie by ourselves yeah. There was maybe one or two other people in the crowd with We've us. We've been in empty theaters for years. For years. And it's just really nice. Like, it feels like there's hope for the film industry. There's hope for mm. the American economy. And it just, like, makes me feel good to be a part of that experience. And I know that I'm going way off of, like, the Twisters review. No, but I think it's so important because yeah. I've been noticing that, too. And, like, it just feels better. Yeah. But I think it's also just a really good sign for our country as far as like community goes, because seeing movies is one of the few experiences that is like what everyone can do that is community building. Yeah. Because going out to eat doesn't build a community because you're insular to who's at your table. Uh Uh-huh. Right. You know what I mean? Movies is one of those few things that you go to and it's like holy shit like we just experienced that together yeah and you're in a room for two hours with these people uh-huh you know what i mean and so it does feel i don't know i just have positive feelings about where things are going 
for all of the things you yeah. mentioned because it feels good which, to see movies with people again. It does, which I also think that with all of the political divide in our country, mm-hmm. like you and I were sat up watching Twisters right next to somebody like openly wearing, you know, like Trump gear Mm -hmm. and we were both just sitting there peacefully enjoying a film together Mm -hmm. and so like there is that part of me that like I just feel good about it that like all of us from all these different backgrounds are Mm -hmm. sitting there like enjoying this thing together and it is a very unifying experience Mm -hmm. because it's like yeah we're like not all that different like yeah we're all we all want to watch this shit and we all want to eat our popcorn and drink our ices yes. and seeing all these full theaters has just led to a more positive outlook just in general mm-hmm. just going to the movies every week and seeing all these people sitting there with us mm-hmm. and enjoying it and hearing them laughing and hearing them you know yeah talking about it when they leave like yeah. i'm getting really you know over dramatic here but it's just nice like even even if i didn't enjoy twisters it's just nice to know that people are coming out in droves for movies like twisters and mm-hmm. like long legs inside out inside too. out too like back to back to back mm-hmm. i feel like it's just been a really fun experience yeah and it also i mean i'm not gonna lie it makes me want to go to the movies more me yeah me too because i feel like part of our slump that we went through you know obviously we've had a lot going on in our personal lives professional lives you know reasons we've had to take breaks but also i feel like part of it was just sort of losing the motivation to do Mm -hmm. to even go to the movies because when you go to an empty theater for years and years and years literal years it felt like yeah it did get a little sad yeah do you know like it started to feel a little lonely Mm -hmm. even though we were together but it just felt kind of sad to like show up every time and be like oh there's no one in line to get food and oh there's no one in the theater and there's like two people total here besides us also i'm gonna tell you one thing Hmm. the popcorn is fresher because they're making more. more And so while they're making more and more, the popcorn has been out of been fucking hitting. control. Shout out to Regal. Also, everyone who works at our Regal right now yeah. is like my favorite person. Yeah. They're all super sweet. Most of them are probably like non-binary or queer. Yeah. Or s- some f- former fashion of the alphabet mafia. And yeah. I just love them. And I love them so much. I just, I'm so, so happy that this is where we are right now because I do feel like we're going up. Yeah. I know it's, you know, been kind of a weird time and a scary, (laughs) scary time. And I just feel, I just feel, I feel like you, I feel very optimistic and excited to continue to go to the movies and have experiences like this. Which it is not common for me to be optimistic. No. It is not common. I am a pessimist Mm -hmm. at my core. Truly. Like, I literally think that the worst is going to happen at all times. Mm -hmm. Shout out therapy. Shout out SSRIs. (laughs) I feel like there has just been a good shift in, like, my mentality of seeing those, like, good aspects and things. And so the the thing that I'm really going to lean into with Twisters is just because I didn't like Twisters and just because it fell completely flat for me, Mm -hmm. it was still a really fun, positive experience that Mm -hmm. like, I'm glad we went, you know, I'm glad we got out of the house. I'm glad we had the funny guy saying things out loud. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we had, you know, fresh popcorn because there was a line there. I'm glad we had all of those things. And Mm -hmm. so it's like, even if Twister, the was a small popcorn for mm-hmm. me like that whole experience was a medium and i think mm-hmm. that that is part of what a blockbuster summer movie is which is it doesn't have to be groundbreaking mm. it doesn't have to win awards it doesn't have to be something incredibly special mm-hmm. it can just be like a really flat movie that everyone yeah. no matter what you bring to the table can enjoy mm-hmm. that experience I'm never going to watch it again, sure. but I enjoyed that experience. So yeah. I'm going to give it like a medium, but more for the experience than the mm. movie itself. Okay. Um, The movie itself is absolutely a small. Mm-hmm. Um, If they had given me a goddamn kiss, it probably would have been a medium. <laughs> yeah. That was so weird. Uh, it felt like the film version of a side hug. Like, you yeah. know, 
Yes. Oh, like my Like when Lord. you're like going to hug someone and you get like the turn to the side and it feels like half a hug or like a dead fish handshake. That's yes. what it felt like. Yes. That ending moment, I was like, oh, brother. Yeah, really weird choice. Um, It was a small for me. Yeah. But I totally agree. I think the experience and, you know, I, like I'm just grateful that people are making movies that's bringing people to the theater. Yeah. Because to be honest, that was also part of the loss of creativity i think on our part yeah. is like good movies weren't really coming out movies that people had really good marketing and you know what i mean yeah. i just feel like the caliber of film is getting better and yeah. better and it's enticing more and more people to come out people like you said to have more money to be able to do these things people are down to clown at the movie theater this yeah. summer and it's been really fun it's, it's been, been a lot of fun a really really fun time and i'm excited for it to continue because there's a lot of good movies coming out yeah. the second half of the year so i'm just riding the wave Same. with you um Same. and you know me i'm the eternal optimist so yeah. I always think things are going to be great and fine and better. And yeah. now things are. And I'm just happy. Anyways, Is your eye good? My eye's so itchy. My allergies are so bad. <laughs> you pass away. Okay. <laughs> go out to the movies. Go see. There is a horror movie that I will not force Caitlin to see because I've been forcing her to see a lot of them. <laughs> there is a new horror movie that's picking up a lot of steam currently sitting at a 96 percent on rotten tomatoes called oddity mm. um that is out right now if you also are not like a deadpool wolverine person go see that go see twisters if you're you know just feeling in the mood for a blockbuster yeah if you just want to go see a fun summer movie absolutely go see Definitely. twisters it's a really good summer like i said your brain movie. is off yeah your brain is night night it's a it's a fun time for that yeah so I'm not sure what our next episode will be, but uh, we will obviously post that on Instagram once we do know. And until then, enjoy the rest of the summer that we have left. It has been a very fun one. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on the ride home. Bye.